All right, welcome to part three uh, in our video series on recurrences and induction. Uh, in, this, uh, in this video, I want to take a look at our third uh, recurrence relation here, V of n. Again, I'm going to translate that into T of n for our proof. Uh, but this is our third one. Uh, again, it was for that strange uh, uh, linear search algorithm that we came up with where we looked at the middle element and then we recursively looked at the left half and the right half to see if our element was in both. That gave us two recursive calls, each about half the size. We, and this was sort of a bizarre algorithm and, and our guess was that it was linear time as well, but are we going to be able to prove that it's linear time? Well, that's the goal uh, of this video. All right, to get started here, I have uh, copied down the uh, recurrence relation again for convenience just to look at. Um, but again, we're going to do our proof here using uh, by induction uh, on uh, this variable n. Okay, remember, uh, we'll start with our base case. In our last uh, in our last case, we had a little bit of problems with our base case. Let's try this one out and see how we're going to do. Remember, uh, let's be brave and just try the ones that are going to work. Usually n equals 0 or n equals 1 are a good one to pick. I'm going to pick n equals 1 again here. Um, my n equals 1, I need to show that t of 1, which we know by definition above here, is just c. We need to show that that is less than or equal to b times 1, which is just b. So this is very similar to the first proof that we uh, we came up with. Uh, our b must be greater than or equal to our c, but if we can, as long as we can pick our b in that range, uh, the base case holds. Okay, so let's go on to our inductive hypothesis. Uh, all right, so hopefully we're, we're getting into the habit here that our inductive hypothesis going to be the same as our actual theorem but stated with a different variable and I use the variable k uh, and we want to make sure we state it for those k less than n not not assuming it for n that would be begging the question uh, and then we can go on uh, to our inductive step where n is greater than 1. So now I want to go ahead and continue this proof using the same uh, strategy that we've already done. Uh, so uh, I've copied down the definition here, uh, but now I want to use my inductive hypothesis, uh, plugging in uh, my, my floor of n over 2. And also I need to be careful here, keeping in mind that there are two copies of this. So again, I, I'm going to say, what is t of the floor of n over 2 equal to? Uh, well, less than or equal to technically. By my inductive hypothesis, it must be less than or equal to. Uh, this b times uh, the floor of n over 2 um, but there are two such copies so when I copy that over I'm going to say uh, 2 times uh, b times the floor of n over 2 plus d okay and again maybe let's use the tools that we have available to us we know that the floor only makes things smaller so we can we can now write that as 2b uh, n all over 2 our 2's are going to cancel out plus our d, so that gives us b n plus d, and we want to show that this is less than or equal to b n. So we ask ourselves, is there a condition under which we can make this leap of faith? And unfortunately, the answer is no, we can't do that. Why? Well, d is greater than or equal to zero, or, or more precisely, it's a positive constant, so we assume d is greater than zero. So there's no way that this last step can work. What's wrong? Why didn't it work? We broke math. We used to have these minus b's or something hanging out here that we got to cancel out. That's, that's what we did last time. Did we mess it up? Did we screw up our math? No, we, didn't. we did our math right. We did it correctly on the way here. It's just, it turns out we were trying to prove something um, that we can't prove. That's, we, we, this is just impossible to do. So we need to stop here and go back and say, let's change our mind. Let's fix what we're going to prove here. All right. So I went ahead and, and just deleted everything we did there because it was wrong. Uh, we need to change what we're trying to prove here. And I'm going to change it. Um, what we want to do is show that it is 
it is uh, less than or equal to b times n. But we got through our proof and we didn't have something to cancel out with the, with the plus d. Remember this plus d we have here? So I'm going to go ahead and give us something to cancel out. I'm going to uh, make up a new constant. I'm going to call it a. And I'm going to subtract it off here. Now this function here, bn minus a, that's definitely in, in big O of n. So if I can show that t of n is less than this function, I must be able to show that it's in big O of n, because I can show this one is in big O of n. So I'm going to pick out this function instead, hoping it's going to be a little easier. But that makes changes to my whole proof. I have to start everything all over again. So let's start with our base case again. Again, we'll be confident and try our n equals 1. Uh, but in this case now, we have t of 1 is equal to c. Let's be careful now. We need to show this is less than or equal to b times 1. That was there before. But the minus a wasn't. So this is actually b minus a. So the condition we get is b minus a must be greater than c. Okay, now let's be, and let's think about that for a second. Now we get to pick b, well we also get to pick a. So, so we, we have, this actually gives us more freedom. We get to pick b and a, uh, and we just need to make sure that their difference is greater than uh, or equal to c. Okay, now let's continue. Okay, so again, uh, the change that we made to our theorem is going to trickle down into our inductive hypothesis. Uh, up here we had bn minus a, so now down here we need to make that bk minus a. Again, just restating what we're trying to prove in terms of k. Okay, let's try again to complete our proof. Now we're going to try it with, uh, again, for n equals 1, we're going to try it with our new proof here. So we're going to get t of n, copying down our definition here, 2t the floor of n over 2 plus our d and again we're going to use our inductive hypothesis. This one is starting to get a little more and more tangled as we do this so if we need to go ahead and just rewrite it down plugging in our, our n over 2 here uh, is going to be less than or equal to we need to know what this is less than or equal to so if we need to we can go ahead and write down uh, as we did before copying down our inductive hypothesis down here uh, to see what it's equal to it's less than or equal to b times the floor of n over 2 minus a let's keep that in mind here we got that minus a still here um, and also let's not forget this too we have the 2 here I'm gonna put it all in brackets now to make sure I'm careful I'm gonna get b floor n over 2 minus an a plus the d. Okay, now let's go ahead and do some algebra. So uh, I'm going to move the 2 through. Well, actually, let's, let's make it a little bit easier on ourselves first. I'm going to get rid of my floor. So I'm going to get 2 bn over 2 minus a plus d. Then multiplying through my 2's cancel here, I'm going to get bn minus 2a plus d. Now I didn't say what I'm trying to get to here, uh, but it, we need to remember it's what's written up here. So I need to show that this is less than or equal to bn minus a. The minus a comes here. So we're actually lucky we have two a's here. And when I do this last step, I like to do bn minus a, because that's what I'm looking for below, minus another a plus d, keeping in mind that this a and this d need to cancel each other out. Since we're looking for something less than, we need our a to be greater than or equal uh, to be our, our, sorry, our a needs to be greater than or equal to our d. Okay, it needs to be greater than or equal to our d. Um, so we can once again finish our proof here uh, by saying let uh, a, well, we'll let a be d then, but we also need to pick our b and we have here b needs to be b minus a has to be c so maybe we should do a little a little uh, work here we said b minus a should be let's say equal to c we said our a is d so that means b minus d is c well actually that means b should be c plus d okay so b is c plus d okay so by induction, um, what did we show? We showed that t of n 
is less than or equal to bn minus a for all the n greater than or equal to which one here? 1. And we're done. And remember, we changed this function up to make our proof work. Now the proof works. That's sufficient to show it's in big O of n. All right, we, uh, we proved the big O. So if we want to finish our type bound off, we want to prove the big omega. Uh, and to do that, I've set up, again, another theorem here. Again, let's try. In the last one, we had to add the minus a on. Uh, well, hopefully we don't need to have the minus a on here. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll have to put a plus a on something else. There's many ways we can change this function. But again, whenever I tackle one of these proofs, I'm going to tackle it in the simplest way first. And if it doesn't work, well, then I'll add some of the other uh, other tools that we have to, to make it work, um, but I'll only make it more complicated if I feel like it's really necessary. Um, so let's get started again, and once again I'm going to try n equals 1. As long as it works, it works. If not, then I'll, I'll switch, it, switch it up. So let's do here t of 1. What is our t of 1? By definition, that's a c. And we need to show that's greater than or equal to a times uh, 1, or just a. So this is a case where a must be less than or equal to c, similar to the first uh, lower bound we looked at. Okay, so once again, we'll uh, copy down our inductive hypothesis. Uh, hopefully, uh, you've been practicing this. You're getting, you're getting careful with this. You know, we want to copy it exactly down, replacing the n's for k's, but again, reminding ourselves that that's only for k less than n, not uh, equal to. Uh, and again, our inductive step should handle all the cases we haven't looked at yet. So if we did n equals 1 already, uh, we'll do n greater than 1. Copying down our definition from above, uh, we've got t of n is equal to 2t, the floor of n over 2, uh, plus our d. And again, we're going to be using our inductive hypothesis here. Uh, it states that t of the floor of n over 2 uh, must be greater than or equal to a times the floor of n over 2. So let's see if that's going to work for us here. Uh, we have 2, uh, and it says here a times the floor of n over 2 plus d, which again, uh, we want to say, okay, that's greater than or equal to something. Well, here in the, in the upper bound, we just got to drop out our floor. But again, we have the floor of x here um, is greater than or equal to x minus 1. So we're actually going to get 2an over 2 minus 2a plus our d. Our 2 is again going to cancel. Okay, the minus 2a coming from the minus 1 here. All right. Uh, that's going to give us our a n minus 2 a plus d, which I might write again as a n. So that gives us in our last step here, uh, so that gives us in our, in our next to last step here, a n minus 2 a plus d, which remember, we're just trying to show that this is greater than or equal to a n. That's what we have up here. Um, so we do need to cancel this out again. And again, this will be a case where we need our d uh, to be greater than or equal to our 2a. We want the positive part to outweigh the negative component. Um, we pick a, so that means a must be less than or equal to d over 2, it looks like. So let's do let um, a be equal to, now we'll pick the minimum of our two values, c and d over 2, um, and then we're done. We'll say so uh, by induction, um, we have shown that t of n uh, is greater than or equal to a times n for n greater than or equal to, and again, we did n equals 1, so it looks like n equals 1, and we're done. We can finish our proof off here. Okay, so this concludes a series of three videos on using induction uh, to, to write proofs for recurrence relations. Um, hopefully in these six proofs, three upper and three lower bounds,
we've uh, practiced enough to uh, notice some of the interesting tools we need to use along the way, uh, maybe get comfortable with it uh, so that we could tackle some of these inductive proofs ourselves. Um, in the next couple videos, in the next two uh, or three videos, I want to again use these techniques and maybe introduce one or two other techniques along the way um, to analyze uh, recursive uh, solutions to the merge sort or re recursive versions of the merge sort and quick sort algorithms. So uh, we'll go into an in-depth uh, analysis of these again using the recursive analysis techniques that we've been reviewing in these last three videos. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.